Shetland blah, 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 enough about the roots of, can you stop? That could include <laughs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? You're my people. You're probably subscribers. Hi, I'm glad to see you. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey. That can include spinning, knitting, weaving, dyeing, maybe some felting, definitely some felting this summer, and gosh, probably all kinds of other stuff. Sometimes there's other crafty bits and pieces of my journey that I share. Before we start Breed Study 10, I have a couple housekeeping things. Number one, I have been seeing you guys sharing videos and the warping bar and even my shop all over Facebook groups, all over, all over the place. And I just want to say, I appreciate you. I have some feelings about too much self-promotion so I don't always comment but I want you guys to know that I see you and I am so grateful thank you and the other thing is just this week which is the week um, starting on April 18 I will have a breed study video and that's gonna be it for the week I've just been feeling a little burnt out and I thought it would be smart for me to take a little bit of time I'm gonna do some shop work because I have a lot of new stuff to put in the shop and I've just been so busy I haven't created listings. So I'm gonna do some shop work. I am going to be doing some weaving that I'll film for the video the following weekend, but this is gonna be it for this week. I hope you guys understand. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I just need a little bit of time off. I've been working seven days a week for, I don't know, weeks. And I just really need to just like, unplug a little bit. Just in case you're new, you can find a link to the breed study below and I am using the Fleece and Fiber source book as my primary source of information. If I use a different one, I will let you know when I'm using it. You can also find a link to the study sheets that I'm using to keep track. I plan to put a small sample in. There will be a finished project at the end. It's going to be great. If you're just joining us on video 10, you can go to the playlist below and you can watch the whole entire thing whenever you decide you want to do a breed study or just look up a particular breed. They'll be there for you. So week 10, we made it two thirds of the way through the original breed study. I have mentioned I'm going to add some stuff at the end, so it's actually going to continue on a while. I don't even know how many extra things that I picked to add to the end, so I'm not sure how many weeks, but I'll know soon. I'm ready. Week 10. I've got my binder, my sheets are in it already. This time they're right side up and everything, so it's almost like I know what I'm doing, but almost. This week we are spinning Romney. I happen to really love Romney. And, and some very pretty gray Shetland. So this week our first breed is Romney. This says it's also a conservation breed. I had no idea, because it seems like I find it all over the place, and I love it. It's a little more middle of the road, it's also got a wide variation because it's kind of gone all over the world and that means that in all those different breeding programs all over the place, like it's changed a little bit, you know, in all of them. It says that they were brought to the Romney Marsh, which is part of England, which is a small part of England. It is below sea level, so they use seawalls and drainage stuff to keep it dry enough to inhabit, but it's very marshy. It's taken hundreds of years, but the sheep adapted to that climate. The Fleece and Fiber Source book says, in the mid 19th century, they used a breeding program to improve the native sheep um, just by using selection and breeding and all that stuff. That's how they do it, right? And they introduced a sheep, which I have never heard of, called the Dishley Lester. And that was sort of like the root of the modern Romney breed. So I'm gonna show you the picture. They're kind of regal looking, right? They're a pretty big sheep. So it says they came to the US in 1904. Oh, interesting. So because they like a humid climate, they're great in the Pacific Northwest and, and in most other humid areas of the United States and Canada. And I said this in the beginning, it says now Romney have been exported around the globe so you can find them everywhere. They're a large sheep known for calm and friendly disposition because they're so big and they make a nice fleece 
they're good for meat and wool. So they're one of those sheep that they've always been trying to develop in all these programs. I was saying it's kind of a good middle of the road wool and basically they do say the same thing. It's kind of good for almost everything or there is a representation in the Romney breed that's good for almost everything. Um, it says it's in the range from moderately coarse to fairly fine. Okay, so I this is one of the things I like about Romney. It says right in here, um, you can spin from picked locks, which is like a little fiber nest, flick blocks, carded roll legs, drum carded bats, any other preparation you want to play with. I do like that it's so versatile. That's one of the things I like about it. I also think it's very, very easy to spin. Let's get to the facts. Romney fleeces, eight to 12 pounds, pretty big fleece. Four to eight inches, also a wide variation and pretty long in general. There are different micron counts for different like regions on the planet, but it basically goes from 29 to 37 and depending on where you are, the range is narrowed down a little bit. In natural colors, it comes in white, black, gray, silver, and brown. I've had quite a few different colors of Romney. That's one of the things I really like about it. It says dyeing takes dye well and clearly. Again, in the preparation part, it says you can basically use any preparation that you like depending on how it goes with your particular fleece. It can be used for a wide range of applications. And again, it's partially because there is a wide range in fibers. You know, it says here all the way from sweaters, mittens, caps to rugs. Let's check the staple length on this. This is a pretty long staple. Ooh. Okay, so this is about seven and a half inch staple. So that's a quite a long one for us. I'm definitely gonna spin it worsted with a short forward draw. Look at that. Wow. Let's go spin it. Are you cold? You're shivering. Okay, we'll cover you up. We're back. Hi, how are you? It's Tuesday, the day this video is coming out. Okay, these spins, very, very different. Gonna start with the Romney. That's how we do in this series, right? So the Romney was absolutely wonderful to spin. Such a long staple. I did draft it straight, um, short forward draw. And it came out so beautiful. It is beautiful. Let me see. Let me get you down at that end there where you can really see. I'm going to say it's sport weight. Uh, I did not check it. I don't do that. You guys know. You know how I am. My experience with Romney when I process it from raw is that it would have normally a little bit more bounce to it than this. I think it's a commercial processing thing. I could be wrong, but that's kind of how I see it. And I think when it gets dyed, a little bit of it might return. We'll have to see, but it's nice. And I enjoyed it two pieces. I got 60 yards almost exactly. It is one that I just really, really enjoy spinning and dying. I just love it. It's beautiful, so easy to spin. The long staple makes it easy to spin it really fine. I could have spun this so much finer, but I was trying to shoot for like at least fingering or sport weight. And it's just, it's gorgeous. It turned out. Mm. That's what's bad about these breed studies. And I remember that the same thing happened to me when I did the original one 150 years ago. I just wanted to like 90% of them buy myself a whole fleece or you know, a whole bunch of it. So I'd have it on hand and I just don't have that kind of space, but I want it. <laughs> So we're on to the Shetland. There is a big section in this book on Shetland sheep. So I am gonna still try and condense it down cause it's a lot. The Shetland Isles are like 
off the coast of Great Britain. Oh, I didn't know this. So it says it's the same latitude as Fairbanks, Alaska. So it's pretty high up there. It's basically between the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea. Definitely gonna be a harsh climate. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And you know how islands are. They've evolved in the harsh island environment for more than a thousand years. They don't really know everything about the roots of this breed because it does go back so far. They've lived there for several thousand years. So from 2000 years ago to the present, uh, we've talked about this once before. There was a period in history where the Romans kind of moved in and tried to take Great Britain and they brought their own sheep. So they found genes from Roman breeds of sheep all intermingled into a bunch and they did find some in the Shetland. Oh, and it also says that the Scandinavian people brought their sheep too. So they think there may have been some. And then this kind of happens any place with a coastline around that general vicinity. Romans, Scandinavians, everybody was kind of going at trying to conquer everybody, bringing their animals along, bringing their own DNA along. You know what I'm saying. So like I said, there's a lot of variation and here they actually refer to it as a sheepy smorgasbord of wool options because there's just so much. There are 11 defined colors that are acceptable in Shetland fleeces. They run the whole gamut. So we're talking about whites, grays, beige, moret, which is like a reddish brown, medium to deep brown and black. Oh, here's the picture. And as they should be, they're overlooking a rocky ocean vista. So it does say sometimes Shetland fiber is super fine. So many of you have probably heard if you're knitters of the Shetland lace ring shawls. It was like you could knit this lace shawl from Shetland wool with a Shetland lace pattern and pass it through a wedding ring. That's the name. That's where that name comes from. It says there's two distinctive types of Shetland. I have heard this before. Kindly, which is fine, soft and more single coated and beaver. It's a coarse style that contains less crimp and more hair. Beaver Shetlands have basically a double coat. It does say double coatedness. They don't know if the double coatedness, I don't enjoy that word at all, is part of the original genetic composition or if it developed over time. I don't know of any other breeds where this is done, but Shetland is one where they do this thing called ruing, which means they like pluck the fiber off the sheep. They do that with like bison and some other types of fiber too, but the only one I know of that you can do it with is a Shetland sheep. So that's kind of a, a unique fact about the Shetlands. So let's go to the, get to the facts. They're pretty small sheep generally. So the fleeces are usually from like two to five pounds. That's kind of a small one. The staple length varies a lot depending on the type of Shetland. So it says think two to four and a half inches in general, but you can find four to six in some sheep, six to 10 in other sheep. Wow. So fiber diameters, they cover the full range and that makes sense because some of them have an undercoat and overcoat and right there you're, you're going to cover a humongous range. But it does say the Shetland Sheep Society gives an average fiber diameter of 23 microns. Again the natural colors I already said it comes in basically every color and if you're going to use Shetland fiber <clears throat> the whites are frequently dyed natural colors most often used in their original state but you can over dye. For fiber prep, it says really depends on the characteristics of the fleece again. You could spin from the lock, card, the shorter ones, uh, comb or flick, the longer, medium, or the mixed ones. So basically, to me, that says you need to look at your particular fleece's characteristics and treat it in the correct way or the best way to use that to get to the yarn you want to get. Makes a lot of sense. We're always doing that anyway, right? It's ranging from lace shawls to color work into crochet and knitting to weave woven tweeds. Find a medium are great for sweaters. Oh, and it also says it has unusual durability for its softness. So that's interesting. For example, I mean, this is a quote. For example, the finest fibers when processed worsted in a cobweb yarn will make an ethereal shawl that is sturdier than it looks. I should hope so, because they look like they're just gonna drift apart. They're beautiful. If you've never seen them, Google Shetland shawls. They are so pretty. Uh, there is a lot more information in this book. If you've already bought the book, I really do recommend this section because there is so much information here. There's information on the colors, the sh patterns of the sheep. Let's check the staple and we'll go spin it. Ooh. Ooh. It's a little 
little shorter. We've got just over four inches. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I think I'm gonna do a short wool and draw. Let's go spin it. And the Shetland. A couple times during the breed study, we've had really good examples of, I don't wanna say opposites, but very, very contrasting fibers. We had that again this time. I'm gonna show you again. So, okay, you can see how much shorter this, this Shetland Hank is when it's twisted. It is really, really bouncy. It's pretty soft and it's really squishy. It would make just the nicest sweater. I think I would love it to death, but look at this. It's a lot of um, loftiness and bounce back. I did spin this with a short woolen draft. I'm sure you saw it in the video, but I did spin it that way and that should maintain a little bit of the loftiness, but you know, you can't fight the fiber sometimes. And I don't think even if I did a short forward draw that I would have gotten like this, you know, non squishy yarn. I think it's just oh, so good. I loved this Shetland. It had a small, very small amount of Kemp. I don't pick Kemp out. Even on the Herdwick I left the Kemp in. Um, to me, it's like if I have to pick it out, if I have to keep stopping, it's just not right for me to spin. And so I leave it in. And normally it doesn't bother me and you can't even find it in here. It's absolutely lovely. It reminds me quite a bit of the Jacob and the Manx Locked In. I said it right, you guys. The Manx Locked In, um, like the feel of it and the amount of bounce and squish. So yeah, they're really good ones this week. I enjoyed these spins. Next week, we will be in the last, the final third of this sampler and then we're gonna go on to a little bonus round and then we're gonna dye these. Next week, we will be tackling the Battle of the Down Breeds. It's gonna be South Down, which is a down breed, adorable cute sheep that look like they're smiling all the time and you just wanna squeeze them and smush them. And Suffolk, big noble sheep. That's how I think of them. I feel like they look noble. Suffolk, I have never had a colored Suffolk before. I have quite a humongous stash of roving in my closet. I really love down breeds, so this is gonna be the battle of the down breeds and I can't wait. Thank you so much for coming back for the breed study week after week. I have said it before, but I honestly was like, are people gonna get bored if I follow the same format? But I think it doesn't make sense to change the format because trying to approach it in a methodical-ish kind of way. You guys are sticking with me, so I appreciate it so much and I'll see you next week. Thanks, I love you, bye.